from this brief, OSAT 1868, the tenor of which declaration is in your ward mode book, and that you do make a return to the town clerk of the city, and the name of the person elected to be of the common council, such return to be signed and delivered at the time and in the form and manner prescribed by acts of the common council, made on, passed on, and passed on the 10th day of December 1857, the 14th day of July 1960, the 23rd day of May 1968, the 9th day of April 1970, the 7th day of July 1977, the 14th day of June 1984, the 12th day of September 1996, the 10th day of September 1998, the 4th day of June 2001, and finally the 10th day of October 2002, and certifying if such elected common councilman has not made the said declaration at your award note. You are hereby enjoined to cause this precept to be read at your award note, hearing fail not, given under my hand this 19th day of December 2013 at Mansion House in the said city, signed Fiona Wolf, Lord Mayor. That is the precept. Um, thank you very much, very well read. I'm sure you'll uh, get more practice, our new ward clerk. Um, uh, uh, can I, just before we start um, with item four of the agenda, can I thank all of those of you who wish to be well of my back operation? I have a stick, just in case uh, things get out of order. It's ready to help me more. <laughs> um, we now go on to item four of the agenda, which I hope you all have, which gives me the opportunity really to thank uh, Sajid Ghani for the work that he did in the short time that he was on the Court of Common Council. So I would like to propose a vote of thanks to him. Um, yes, could I have a seconder for that, please? Thank you, uh, John Fletcher. Um, and uh, all in favor? Thank you very much. Right, so item four um, uh, we've, we've done. We now come on to the nominations. Um, and I'm going to ask the honorary ward clerk um, in this articulate fashion to read the names of those who have been validly nominated uh, for this election. There are seven uh, nominations. Uh, Al Dusani, Muhammad Yusuf, Rockington Maria Georgina, Campbell Taylor, William Goodacre, Jones, Roger Frank, Mahmoud, Syed, Milner, Evan Phillip, and finally, Walker, Andre, Jean, so John Paul. Everyone does it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank, thank you very much. Um, item six, um, as is tradition, we, uh, we allow those of the candidates who wish to, to address the ward moat uh, in the order that um, the honorary ward clerk read out the names. Uh, we like to keep these short, a maximum of five minutes, please. Um, and uh, I would ask uh, Muhammad Yusuf if you would like to uh, address all that five minutes. No, why don't you stand so people can okay. in there? Sure. In any way you like. Okay. It'd be nice to see the seat. Um, first, extremely quickly, the boring bit since you don't know who I am. Uh, my name is Muhammad, and unfortunately, due to library rules, I've had to leave your new. Uh, Lord Mayor Sir William Wallace, the hamster at home, um, that he sends his greetings. Um, I'm currently senior fellow in Islamic studies in the Westminster Institute, which is an international academic institution headquartered in Washington, D.C., with an office here in Pusey. Westminster Institute undertakes academic research into the role of religion in public life and countering extremism, working in collaboration with the Defence Academy of the UK, uh, George C. Marshall, New Penn Centre for Security Studies in Germany, etc., where I'm visiting lecture. I Previously, I uh, was a fellow in Islamic studies at Leobeck Rabbinical College, uh, where, uh, which is a Jewish seminary where I taught rabbis and rabbinical students uh, classical studies relevant to Jewish-Muslim relations and doing the same work um, with uh, Christian seminarians and ordinands as visiting lecturer at Wycliffe Hall, University of Oxford, and Oak Hill Theological College. I graduated with my magister postgrad degree, uh, postgrad degree as a qualified imam under the Ijaz seal of al Asr Sharif in Cairo, uh, the Islamic equivalent of rabbinic smicha. And my prior background was in clinical academic medicine. I did my undergraduate at Oxford, postgrad at Cambridge, and higher specialist um, training in public health from the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine and in Peel. So that's a boring bit. Um, I'm very conscious that this is, this is uh, the run-up to the Jewish festival of Pesach, 
uh, with Easter, the Christian festival of Easter just around the corner. And um, I just want to thank um, all of these friends and colleagues of mine, I see so many good friends and colleagues of mine, who've helped me win this election with a landslide victory without ever having to have anybody vote for me. Uh, for your grace, your hospitality, your kindness to me. Uh, the the uh, Parashat Kedoshim in the book of Leviticus says, Kedoshim tihu ki kadosh ani Adonai, be you holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And uh, commends God's people uh, to welcome uh, with open arms and generosity of the stranger, and I thank you for that, Gaurav uh, Mir um, My own position is very clear, uh, that I'd like you to vote for an independent, non-party political candidate who is locally resident. Uh, the lovely Murray has the clear support of the Ward Club. Evans are decent and honourable fellows. Roger and Syed are nice chaps. I've had the pleasure of meeting Andre before. Under no circumstances anybody to vote for me as the joke candidate. I should be mortified if on that account one wasted joke vote for me and got Campbell Taylor in. One of the most important things I learned at medical school was the vital imperative of trust, honesty, confidentiality in a relationship between a clinician and a vulnerable patient, clergyman and a vulnerable person, common counsellor and you. You are deeply concerned for security in the honor states. Security door, CCTV, uh, the phase three, but just as vitally in your vote you are handing the keys over to your homes and to your lives, to your elected common councilmen. The ward mode is a people's assembly with the benefits of a court of law, and I therefore wish to submit the following statements very shortly uh, to, the, to the people of Port Sokin. Firstly, that pursuant to section 106, one of the Representation of People Act 1983, it is an illegal practice for me, as a candidate, to make or publish any false statement of fact relative to another candidate's personal character or conduct. I therefore wish to submit myself to immediate prosecution should I do so. Secondly, I wish to submit to this ward mode that I have every reason completely to trust, entirely to have confidence in the concerns backed up with evidence by Common Councilman Henry Jones that the candidate William Campbell Taylor has most seriously made false, deceitful, untruthful statements in his election literature to voters in respect of claims of achievement relative to Middlesex Street. The same I wish to support in respect of Councilman John Fletcher's concerns backed up with evidence that William Campbell Taylor has most seriously made false, deceitful, untruthful statements in his election literature to voters relative to Mansell Street. Fourthly, I wish to present to the record of this ward mode the final Labour Party election statement to voters on the around on or around the 8th of March, which in its uh, footer on the last page states printed by St Thomas's Church Clapton Common in violation of Section 2 of the Charities Act 2006, the Charities Commission's rules as set out in Section E of the Charity Commission guidance. I also wish to bring most personally to the attention of the ward mode the fact that the campaign team got Mrs. Arif Nessa of Guinness Court, who is a lady entirely unable to read English, to sign a circular letter in support of this Labour Party candidate, which document she cannot read. William Taylor backs your right to know, it is said, um, and yet in response to, to my bringing this to your right to know, um, stuff about my personal life and my uh, clinical depression uh, was drawn to your public attention. These were extremely personal matters that I confided in a vicar that I trusted many years ago. All I will say to you, William, is I still care about you fraternally and indeed love as God loves calls us to love our brothers. But the fact is your conduct disgusts me. It, what you've become appalls me. The people of Port Sokan have a right to an admission from you that you have behaved dishonestly, a right to an apology from you that you have behaved dishonestly. But instead of, of that, of doing what any decent human being would do with a conscience and coming here for your forgiveness, you have come here instead to ask for their vote to put you into political power. I pray that, may, that God may protect and keep safe the people of Port Soka, and may God bless you all. Thank you. very much for that. Um, the second uh, candidate um, who's invited to address us, so if she so wishes, is Mary. Mary, if you wish. Um, well, I think you all know me. I, I really don't need to, to give myself an introduction. I live here. Um, whatever happens to all of you will happen to me. I don't have another address to go to. All the interesting developments that are in the pipeline for Port Soken, I want to be involved with. And if I'm elected, I, it would be a privilege for me to work with Henry Jones, John Fletcher and Dennis Regis. You're already extremely good Port Sokin team. Thank you very much.
so yes. far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, William Campbell Taylor. Oh, did you say so which? Maybe I could use some of your <laughs> No. <laughs> so, as, as I was uh, sitting in morning prayer this morning at, at St Thomas's Church, um, wondering what I could say to address this um, honourable ward mode, and feeling a little bit ambivalent about it, to be honest, given the, the level of um, hostility that has uh, been demonstrated towards my candidacy. Um, I was, half, I was half listening to the, to the, to the readings, and I realized that, in fact, today is the feast day of, of Joseph, Joseph of Nazareth, uh, or Joseph the Carpenter, uh, the, the husband of Mary and the father of Jesus. And on, on this feast day, we, um, we're bidden to remember all children who have been deserted by their parents and we're encouraged to pray for those who have been damaged by their parents. And as a clergyman in Hackney, a, a number of my, a significant number of my parishioners are one of single parent families. Um, I myself, uh, my father died when I, was, when I was four, and I was raised by my mum, and that has, um, I think it shaped my life considerably over the years. Uh, and I think it's one reason that I am committed to uh, staying in election area in Port Sokan. I feel Port Sokan is a ward that has been forgotten by the city fathers. The Richard, present company, accepted, I know, Alderman Smythe has, has shown certainly in the past when I was involved in the ward, a considerable interest in this, in this ward. But I feel that this ward has been overlooked by the council, the richest square mile in the world, finds it difficult to act as landlord, repairs aren't done, security doors aren't mended, people come and use the, the entrance of the urinal. There are, there are constant things that need, need doing in this particular estate that aren't done, and you would expect them to be done by a, a proper local authority. It's a systemic problem. I don't think it's about individuals, I think it's about the system, because I know that there are individuals who work hard on behalf of this ward. And similarly, in in the Guinness Trust estate. There are problems of, of, of security, the shed doors, problems of damp that are, and the car park, there are serious problems that people worry about and have been concerned about for years. We shouldn't have to wait two years for both the doors and the security on this estate to be mended, to have an election, to have 86 people sign a petition on this estate and 96 on Guinness Trust Estate. These are things that should be done automatically by a responsible, intelligent uh, social authority and local authority. It's not just inaction, it's also lack of information. There's stuff that's happening about uh, this estate, particularly in relation to phase three, that hasn't been, uh, been in, the, in the public domain until recently, until until we did a Freedom of Information uh, request on that. These things should be in the public domain. And were I elected as your representative, I would seek to ensure that there were strong representative bodies. I think that is the way that things, that things are done, things are changed, that people can act together to serve the common good. And politics isn't about always agreeing about everything, except possibly when you're uh, standing in an election and you have everyone attacking you. It's about making sure that you can have a proper disagreement and you can disagree well. So, finally, I'd like to, I'd like to thank Alderman Sir Michael Baird for uh, convening the meeting. I, tomorrow is a long day. I'd like to thank all those that are involved from the electoral uh, office for the work that they'll, they'll be doing. I'd like to thank you all for turning out tonight. I'd like to thank people who have supported my campaign. I'd like to thank uh, my fellow candidates for should we say the entertainment that they've provided. Um, and Mohammed Yusuf, I'd like to thank you. Um, now, you, I'd say you've got over, over the top a little bit with your election literature. Ha however, you are a brilliant musician, and I have enjoyed your CD over the last few weeks enormously, and I'd like to commend it to you if you haven't already listened to it. It's a wonderful piece of music. Enjoy. Thank you. Roger, Roger James, but will you stand there? I can get better control of the pen.
Good evening, everybody. My name is Roger Jones. I've lived in Manchester Street since 1992, and I've been involved in residents' association and various uh, local initiatives um, over the past 10 years. Uh, many people have told us when they're coming around trying to go about what they will do for you. I've been doing lots of bread and butter things the last five years in particular. Um, I've been talking, for example, to the people who are developing the hotel in Oldgate to try and provide more public space, to provide a permanent community and health centre, to provide facilities for our young people. I've talked to the, the Oldgate Strategy Group who are designing the new, Old, the new Oldgate High Street area, again, to create more public space, to create more <coughs> facilities for younger people. Um, in terms of the bread and butter issues, such as security and CCTV cameras and so on, these are issues I've been constantly working on for the past, let's say, five or six years. Mostly with regard to the Guinness Trust estate that I live. But if you were to elect me, I'd bring the same enthusiasm and commitment for the whole of Port Sokin to Middlesex Street as well. I've also worked with all of the current common councillors. They know me quite well. I've worked on different projects with them. Um, and I also have nowhere else to live apart from this ward. So again, anything that happens to the ward also happens to me. That's all I've got to say. Thank you very much for listening. Speech. I just want to say that um, whatever happens tomorrow, I've been deeply humbled by this journey. Residents of both estates welcomed me into their homes. They have shared their stories of frustrations. They have spoken of their ideas. Along the way, talking with all of them about their views, about, about their own lives, they have inspired me. I came into politics because I love the city of London. I didn't run and campaign my heart out just to win an election. I'm here to reclaim the basic bargain for our local residents and the local businesses. So together, we can create a prosperous Port Soken. I think we need some immediate change in our policies in this world. Change which has meaningful impact. For me, these change mean more openness, more communication, and more cooperation. Listening and solving more problems for our residents, helping more to our local businesses, engaging more with young people. I believe that our residents and business should get equal attention from the corporation. For me, changes mean to take difficult decisions, to lead people through those difficult decisions, so that together we can reach better times ahead. City of London today competes against New York, Paris, Tokyo, Toronto as a global financial center. So we must always promote and support city's economic growth and its global competitiveness. But at the same time, we must invest more effort and resource in our local businesses, in, in our budding entrepreneurs, in our young, talented people, and in our ordinary residents and for their needs. Many of you already know, I run my own business in city. You pay your rent, I pay my rates. You and I belong to the city of London. I don't live in Port Sokin. It is actually not a problem, but far from it. Because here I am, part of the something greater, something larger. I represent my Bengali community. Like everyone else in Port Sokin, they deserve undivided attention. They deserve better representation. I'm not local. It is an advantage to work for everyone without fear or favor. It gives our residents more power to hold me accountable for every action I will take. Given the overwhelming amounts of concerns I've heard and dissatisfaction and division I have witnessed among residents in both estates, a local candidate is the last thing they're looking for. The majority of voters I have met, they don't care about whether I'm a local or not. They care about, will I serve them better? Will I be treating them equally? 
Will I be listen and respect their views and represent their interests impartially? Will I be there when they need me on their side? Will I be making the peace, breaking the deal? So let me level with you. The only way we are going to achieve our goals is by electing a candidate who has courage, conviction, determination, energy, professional ability, and personal integrity. Only well-known and well-loved doesn't make any candidates' credentials any stronger anymore. And make no mistake, it would be the same old story if your vote doesn't reflect the reality that tomorrow we just don't need another individual, another local individual, we need a credible individual who can deliver best possible results on your doorsteps. To me, this election is to reject shabby, outdated party politics, conflict and complexity. This election is to welcome fresh thinking. This election is to serve people tirelessly. And this election is not about me. It's about us. This election is about how we work together to improve quality of life in this area. What more can be done to improve estate maintenance, safety and security? How we, we can work together closely with the corporation so we can make sure that it, they deliver right services on time and every time. What urgent steps and innovative ideas can put forward to resolve complex issues such as parking and so sorry I'm already, already there. Yeah. and uh, based development. To me, this election is to empowering our residents and unite them for a stronger cohesive community. This election is an opportunity to bring positive change in this world, change which has meaningful consequences, which has profound, lasting legacy. Port Sokin needs a great leader who can deliver the best result for its residents. In fact, Port Sokin needs a game changer. I believe that as hard as it will be, the change we need is coming, because I have seen it, because I have lived it. Change happens. Change happens because people demand it because they, they rise up and insist on new ideas and new leadership and new politics for a new time. For Sokin, I have just one word for you. Just one word. Tomorrow. Tomorrow you can turn the page on policies that remove barriers for our residents. Tomorrow you can choose policies that invest in our residents and in our community so that everybody has a chance to succeed. Tomorrow you have a great opportunity to vote for me. So together we can bring the change you despite the need. So let's turn this spring of hope into summer of action. Let's work together side by side, time after time. Let's make it happen because together we are for so many. Thank you very much for listening. I'm going to keep it very short because there are seven candidates. Um, I'm going to say one thing and that the devil is in the details. And in ward government, it is all about details. It's about doors with pebbles in the corner that don't close properly. It's about doors that, when they close slowly, you know, you can pull them back open again. Um, it's about common councilmen not consulting with the residents about details about things. So although they're doing a good job, and I don't deny that our common councilmen are doing a wonderful job, I think there's a distinct lack of consultation. And so we get things um, like doors that don't work properly. Uh, we get problems um, with the Guinea's estate where we have residents issued parking permits and other residents issued guest parking permits and people can't park and then all kinds of things happen that can be resolved that require persistent, ongoing, mind-numbing attention to detail. And as a common councilman, I think that is what this war needs. It's not about high ideals. It's about working with the residents, giving the residents the power to decide on things themselves, and then the residents being behind the common councilman, helping them do their job. But the common councilman, on the other hand, also have a duty to communicate. I think a lot of the problems we've seen in Port Sokin <coughs> haven't happened because our councilmen are not working. They've happened because our common councilmen are not actually talking enough. I don't think it's a difficult problem to solve. I think uh, the things like the Bush Open Focus Group coming up, um, there are a lot of good things happening in the ward. The city has invested a huge amount of, of money recently into our ward to investigate it, to look at it, and things are moving forward. Um, 
And that's really all I have to say. That's about details and hard work and ongoing daily attention to tiny details that are extremely boring. Um, it's not about great ideals. Thank you very much. Mr. Old, sorry, uh, Mr. Alderman, uh, Common Councilman, Deputy, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, uh, like, uh, like Saeed, have been welcomed into so many homes in Port Token, uh, but there have been occasions when I didn't get welcomed in. I banged on one guy's door and said to him, he opened the door and he said to me, excuse me, mate, if you become a Common Councilman, are you exempt from council tax? I said, absolutely not. That would be completely improper and completely disgraceful. He said, I'm not voting for you then. I said, well, why the hell not? He said, well, if you can't sort yourself out, what the hell are you going to do for me? <laughs> I, I also know, I also know my very good friend, I'll wave to you, uh, Bryn Phillips is filming for the Occupy movement. And I have to say to some of you who know this already, I have appeared on YouTube before and didn't end well, but I'm hoping that today's video will be rather more uh, successful. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I, I suppose uh, these, we, we look at our democracy in the city of London and it is so derided and so trajected and so attacked. And it is a figure of amusement for certain candidates who come here today because they believe the city ought to be wrecked as something that they believe is something that you want. But then you look at an election with seven candidates and with a room this full, and actually the truth of the matter is, democracy in the city of London and in Port Soken is alive and well, and I doff my cap to you guys for making that happen. You put that on, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Anyone who's not seen that really needs to look at it later. Um, my dad met him and was really very impressed. And ladies and gentlemen, look, I, I imagine you've been harangued by letters from me, so I won't necessarily go through my policies. What I will say to you is that there is a great tradition in Port Soken, and that tradition dates back to the Napoleonic Wars, when this country was at genuine risk of invasion, and the good people of Port Soken formed themselves up into a military unit to defend uh, this country and this city. That was the moment, in my view, that Port Soken had its right to a seat at the top table. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know all of you, although I've met many of you. I believe that my background and experience gives me the best possible hope of taking that seat at the top table and doing something with it. I will tell you one other thing uh, that I've learned through bitter experience during this election. I really believe that running up uh, Petticoat Tower would tone my thighs. Uh, sa sa sadly, sadly, if you wash it down with a biryani from Mumbai Square, that doesn't work. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great city. This is a great community. You have a great alderman, a great ward beadle, who I think I saw on the Stephen Fry programme, but maybe not. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, and, and some great common councilmen who I've met. Some of them support me, but some don't. But, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, we have a great team here. I wish to add to that team. I hope you will seriously consider voting for me. But whatever you do tomorrow, remember two things. This is about your city, and this is about your democracy. And do not elect the people who wish to ruin it through party politics, through personal hobby horses, and through... If I'm being honest with you, no interest and goddamn laziness. If you elect me, I'll work hard. You know what somebody said to me the other day? He said, he said, you're not, you weren't born round here. I said, is it the accent that uh, gave it away? <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you'll vote for me tomorrow. But if you don't, please, please, please support an independent candidate who's going to do something for this area rather than carp on, moan and cause trouble. Thank you very much. Those are seven very interesting, very different, um, but very genuine uh, addresses. Thank you very much for those. Uh, we now come on to item seven, uh, which gives an opportunity for those electors in this room, if you have the electors of Port Soden to ask a question, to ask any questions uh, to any of the candidates. And uh, just to be sure that we have a record, if you could just say, uh, if you want to ask a question, what your locus as an, an elector is, so that uh, we can check it. Um, we don't have anybody from the bar that can ask you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's obviously a resident who is standing uh, is obviously elected. So um, would anybody uh, like to put a question to any of the candidates? <laughs>
Uh, Ivan, you have to say who you are. I know you. I'm guessing who are you? I'm Ivan Kingsley. I live in the tower. Thank you. I'm the secretary of the war club. Um, can, uh, William Campbell Taylor, your flyers have gone round with so many spurious remarks that you have done so much in the period of time that you weren't even on the council. So how can you possibly be truthful and eventful to stand for the common council? Is that your question? Yeah, yeah. thank you. William, would you have to yeah, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure what that's referring to, but I, let me let me see if I've got this right, um, Mr. Kingsley. That the the um, the work that we've done in the last few months, two months, in relation to listening to people. Excuse me, but you're going back years when you weren't even here, when you were on the council. You yeah, have to let the candidate ask the question. I think he understands. Um, I'm afraid I don't completely understand the question. But I, I, you know, I, I was, a, I was, a, I was a, a councillor between 2005 and 2009, and was, was active in that period, and have been very active recently. I think in the last three months, we've spoken to over 200 people. We identified particular concerns that the residents wanted addressed, particularly around security on this estate and the gate and the no, shed doors and the CCTV numbers. Excuse me, please. Um, actually, it was interesting going back through the minutes of the Middlesex Street Residents Association to see that, for example, um, in, in May 2012, there was a, uh, a request to sort out the, the doors that apparently are being sorted out this week. Um, and uh, one of the councillors said that he would lobby for them to be Replaced. Well, it took two years. It took an election. It took a petition that we organised, the Labour group organised, to bring that into, to bring that, should we say, to fruition. I think that was a result. Others, others obviously would disagree. Fine to disagree. But I would stand by that uh, particular action, as I would also stand by the the action on on the Guinness Trust. You know, I spoke to residents who had had problems with their shed doors. This is one of the mind-numbingly mind small details that, that um, Evan talked about, but actually matter to people who live on the estate. But the shed doors, because they'd been they'd been cut out of larger doors, but hadn't been sealed, the the rainwater got into them and they walked. And, the, and the, there's a whole range of them along the periphery of the estate. And that some of the residents have been have been um, complaining for, for two years. Uh, and I spoke to, to one man who said that he, he asked uh, Mr. Fletcher before the uh, last election whether he could do something about it. Um, and and no, doubt, no, no doubt John Fletcher did do something about it. But the, problem, the fact was that, that when we spoke to him a year on, it still hadn't been fixed. Uh, and so we began a petition. We, we, we identified the, uh, the chairman of um, Guinness Trust South, the managing director, uh, Margaret Global. I spoke to her. And uh, she contacted us immediately to say that they were going to be done, um, they were going to be repaired this week, again this week. So I consider that to be a result. Now, it turns out that, the, that, that John had emailed her um, four days after the election had been called in, in January, it's true. And uh, I, I wasn't aware of that at the time. And that um, it was only we can look at it. There was a restructural report, the NAPS Hicks report that had been completed two years ago that hadn't been distributed, hadn't been published for residents to see. It turned out there are four other reports, three other reports. There was a noise impact assessment, a light impact assessment, and an architect's uh, report. And that now they are, as I understand it, or some of them are um, in, the, in the library here because of the intervention that we, that we made. I can't, I can't answer what happened um, over the last two years, uh, but I do know that there are, there's a systemic problem is that the city would prefer to make decisions and then and then do a, a, a in this sort of in this sort of in this sort of uh, context and then do probably quite a superficial consultation. There is there is a requirement um, under European legislation to consult uh, the Aarhus Convention to consult residents at the earliest possible um, occasion and to put information into the, into the public domain so that there can be a, an informed discussion and then common decision. So I don't know what the reason for that is, but, but I am hopeful 
that uh, there can be a proper discussion about these things. And I, and, uh, I see no reason why, uh, if the estate is minded to, and the city wishes to pursue it, um, this particular proposal uh, won't proceed. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, can we have a... I have a question. Yeah, I'll save you all. Yeah. Um, there has been... Sorry, my name's Sue Lyon, and I live um, in 634 Petticoat Square. Just for everybody else. Yeah, um, Right. Um, I'm, I'm aware of emails uh, transpiring between um, Reverend Dudley and Henry Jones about the doors. There was an initial plan for the doors to be... Um, to be really... And that was actually done. Um, I think that was a, whilst I was on the committee, there was a door which took time, but it was, it was completed. And then there was a, an issue regarding money, just to the, to the restrictions that, of the ring fencing in the city. Um, you have to come to your question quite soon. Sorry. And um, I want to know, um, because the city refunded, they had to go back to the drawing board, and they took time, but I was actually aware before that this campaign started for, for elections, sorry, um, that, um, that they, they were planning to do these doors. So your question is to who? Uh, William to William. Taylor. Okay, so I think... So how do you explain that, that this was actually going on before okay. the campaign? Right. Um, right. And I'm quite sure they don't, the city doesn't have a politician. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. no, as, I said, as I said a moment ago, I'm, I'm conscious that in the minutes which I've read that, that, that it was going on two years ago, that there was a request to sort out some security issues downstairs, and it wasn't done. And all I can say is that, that two years later, the context of an election, of a petition, that at that point 70 people had signed, now more like 75, 80 people had signed, because there's still the issue, unresolved issue about the shutters, people coming in, tailgating, getting in, not being able to exclude them, that the, there was there was a sudden there was su there was a sudden bit of action. I, I noticed there's been repainting going on on the estate. Now I think that I'm I'm putting the, the the facts as I see them before you, and you are, you know, you're intelligent people. You can draw your own conclusions. Thank you very much. Okay, Kathy. Yeah, say who you are. Yeah, stand up. Eighty-five middle section. I've got a family business there. Okay. Just a quick question for William. He's very passionate about Port Sophie. He speaks very passionately about it and what he wants to do for all this. What board did you stand in at the last election, William? It wasn't Port Sophie. It was so worried about us. Why didn't you stand at the last election? Excuse me. Is this the residence? This is for me. It's for electors. I'm elector. I'm elector. I'm elector. I'll show you okay. So I, 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 had, I, had, I had a different set of concerns at the oh. last election, <laughs> which, were, which, were, which were related. But they're not. Order, order, order. Yeah. But they're not. You said it was. Well, Canada answered the question. So, so I, I have a concern that the City of London, the financial services, doesn't always act in the interests of the consumer. In this instance, my concern is the City of London isn't acting in the interests of so the So your question is for, for Port Sulkin again. Okay, okay. Can we let the candidate? William, just you know, there's, 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 there, is, there is a there is a there is a prayer that, that I say regularly: the Lord comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. And the part of the prayer last year was about bringing the the, the, com the comfort of the city. Into, uh, into the account of the people, people. and uh, this, this election is much more about looking after the interests of the rest. It's the same commitment, but it's a different aspect. Thank you very much. Any, any uh, other questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to ask um, Marie. Uh, sorry, so yeah, Marie Wolf has yeah. to write this down. Okay. Alan Hawley, Petticoat Square 425. <coughs> I'd like to ask Marie. Um, what are her plans to support the Residents Association and what she plans to do to heal the rift between those who've resigned, that this is Middlesex Street, yes. and those who who remain. Um, I'm sure she's got some, I know Marie, I'm sure she's got something in mind, but I, I feel that that's one of the really important things okay. to be done. Obviously the RA, sorry, was extremely yeah. important. I wouldn't have sat on the RA for so many years if I didn't consider it to be vital. And it was, it was representative. And I think the future, it, you have to have more tenants. You can't have an RA made up of leaseholders, can you? As soon as you have the proper split, 60% tenant, 40% leaseholder, and perhaps work towards recognition by the city of London again, we can start building.
building ridges. Mm. And I would definitely be behind you, but you must have more tenants. Mm. You can't function, otherwise what's the difference between the Residents Association and the Leaseholders Association? All leaseholders. So my, my question really was, what do you plan to do to support well, that? I mean, I think everyone's in agreement on Well, I think we have yeah. to start building bridges, obviously. Yeah. For recognition to occur, you've got to have more tenants. That's the simple answer, isn't it? Once you have to recruit more tenants mm. to, to form the RA and then work your way towards recognition by the City of London. But, but you will, you work, with will you work with the Residents Association to, to do that? I will. will and will other? Would, well, if elected, uh, we can start yeah. building bridges. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'm all for building bridges because an RA is, is vital. I mean, I sat on one for many years. And thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rebecca Sinclair from the 60 Workers Folk Square. My question is to the gentleman sitting there. I don't know your name. Oh, yeah, you. Mr. Milner. Stripe your shirt. Oh, that's you. Myself? Or, oh, what, yeah. me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's your name? Andre. Andre. Is that the question? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was really easy, guys. I love and love and love life characters, and I think you have the passion and the voice that we need right now. My yeah. question is. How do you plan to incorporate the youth, the young youth of the residents, which I've only been here a year, I'm a market trader on Petcoat Lane, Brick Lane and Spitfalls Market. How do you plan to incorporate the young and the old traditional values of the city in your, um, if we elect you? Thank you very much for the question. Well, okay, I mean, I mean, I, my, my own view, and I'm the uh, Vice Chairman of the Society of Young Freemen of the City of London, who take uh, people from all walks of life. Firstly, I, I honestly think that sometimes we have this view and uh, propagated by some people that says that just because you're a young person you're not interested in the history of the city or the traditions of the city or you don't want to join, join a livery company or take the freedom or join the Society of Young Freemen. In my experience that's entirely wrong. Actually uh, people are interested in it. Now obviously there is a marketing campaign mm. that has to take place. We have to go out and I'm very happy to bang on doors and talk to young well, people. What are, we, what are we planning to do? Like three top things that we that you hope to do with us well, think, and the residents. Well, well, I, 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 I think, I think, I think, Bend, maybe. I think I, I'm very, I'm very happy to go to South End. <laughs> Although, if I'm being honest, I'm more familiar with Blackpool. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but nonetheless, uh, look, I would go to South End with you any time. Just, uh, yeah, you just, you just give me a call. Um, yeah, I, I, well, I, I think, I think the other thing is, and I was, I was talking to some young people uh, on Guinness Court. Uh, and, and I made the point to them that there is a fantastic organisation called the City Bridge Trust and what they do is they take all the profits from the endowments from the city bridges and they distribute them to young people's charities and, and those young people's charities support young people who are from disadvantaged backgrounds getting jobs in the city and getting training. You know, we, we need to tell more people about that. And, and I, you know, no matter how hard the city works, no matter how much aldermen and common councilmen and deputy aldermen work, the truth of the matter is, with every passing year, a new crop of young people come through who don't necessarily have information about schemes like that. So it is just a constant fighting battle to try and do it. But it's a battle that I'm very happy to be involved with. So City Bridge Trust would be a great thing. Also, I would love more young people to take the freedom of the city, which is their right when they live here, and join the Society of Young Freemen. Not, not merely because I'm just marketing my own organisation, <laughs> though, 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 though if you do have, <laughs> they would be very welcome to join. Look, it, it's a constant battle. I'd like to think that the work that I've done on this campaign demonstrates that I bring some energy to that battle. Yeah. I'm also very happy to go to South End as long as you come to Blackpool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Andrew Hinton, 17 Petticoat Town. Could I ask one of the Rock and Stone questions, please? Yes. Uh, you say you're going to try the bridges. Well, I've seen your mentor and his attitude to people who object to the way he's just spoke to me. Could you just explain to me? how your competence to be on a resident association when when you handed over the accounts a blank six blank signed checks were in the treasurer's possession yes. there was another signatory breaking the rules not just what, you're saying they don't, they don't yeah. exist? Sorry, you're saying they don't well, exist? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So she's signed, she's signed. Can we check, just ask your question and give the candidate? Six blank checks 
yes. and handed them to the other Home Secretary. Yeah. And at the time, there was three thousand pounds of cap. So you had no control over what money was being sent, oh, spent oh, or not. Right, you've asked your question. Yes. Yes. I was not the only secretary, obviously. But and you're the one who signed. Yeah, them. And I, yeah, I guess. I, yes, there was another signature too. I wasn't the only signatory to three thousand pounds. I, I would sign some bank checks so the treasurer could carry on with his work if I was going on holiday, for instance, that sort of thing. It's done. It's done that's a lot of things. That's the it's just that you think that's, that's the truth. You, you think that's the truth. Thank you. Excuse me. I don't know what you're saying. I'm not thinking of you. What I'm hearing is that the check required two signatures. One was on there. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yes. That was, that's, it that's, was done for, to expedite business. Okay. That was all. And is we trusted that, each okay. other. Any, any, um, any other questions any for the candidates? Well, you are as well. Yeah. <laughs> you can ask yourself one. No, no, no. I believe I'm, as a resident, I'm You can, yes, absolutely. This is a question to any of the other candidates to which this applies. I don't know in advance how many it applies to, but I'm asking everyone apart from me, because I know the answer, as far as I'm concerned, which is, have you stood for office anywhere else? And a, a subsidiary, when, have you ever stood for office under the banner of, of a political party? Okay. okay, so can we, that's a question to all of us. To all of them, everybody apart from can me. We, yeah. Can we just start on the end? Uh, Aaron. Okay, so I was common councilman in Port Soak in 2001 for one year term, it was the last one year term, um, and uh, I've never been a member of a political party, let alone stood uh, as a political party candidate. Okay. Uh, yes, despite the fact that I've not been a member of a political party for 10 years, I, as a teenager, ran for the Conservatives for Wigan Borough Council and lost badly, as you might understand. Uh, I, think, I think I got up about eight votes or something in, in Hindley in Wigan, uh, which thankfully is not where I live, but nonetheless is where I stood. Uh, let me tell you something else, because in, in the interest of further disclosure, I have worked uh, at the House of Commons, I've worked at the European Parliament, and I was an Olympic advisor at London City Hall. I'm not ashamed of the fact that I was involved in politics. In fact, I think I bring something to the table because of that. Uh, but what I do feel very firmly, and I don't know if you got my letter yesterday, that the most important thing when we are represented by a Conservative member, a uh, Labour London Assembly member, and MEPs from five different political parties, what is the point of politicising this election? I remember Henry Jones said to me, and he said to me, look, the point of the matter is... just answer the question. The, well, I, I think I have. Yeah. Uh, the point, in fact, quite well, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Over ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he said to me, nobody's interested in party politics here. Local government, you know, is about reaching out and working together. And I believe that I can work with almost anything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Roger. Um, yes, I did stand in. I've, I've never stood as a, a, as a political candidate, but I have stood as a joke candidate last time round um, in Castle Baynard uh, Ward, where I'm a member of the Ward Club, uh, on the ticket to vote for free beer. Um, under, yes, it was me. <laughs> yes, it was me. It was a source of some amusement that I, I, I got a few more votes from William on that occasion. Okay. Um, but, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, I actually, yeah. Uh, actually, actually stood for by election in um, Bishopsgate. Uh, that's that's what I have done just so far. So I mean, obviously, this election my second time. It's a little bit louder. Can't see. Yeah, sorry, but project your voice. Yeah. Well, yes, I can be loud. That's right. I mean, I actually stood in election last year, which is, uh, but I mean, obviously, this is actually my second time for. Uh, I'm, I'm actually. Running for the office. Thank you. Are you a member of a political? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I've never stood for political office, and I've never been a member of a political party. Thank you very much, William. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sad. I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm I have represented this ward uh, as an independent on two uh, periods. And I am now a member of the Labour Party, and I'm standing, you might have noticed, as a Labour candidate. What about the other times? Have you stood in another ward? Well, in answer to in answer to um, your question, I stood in Warbrook Ward in in the elections last year without any real uh, expectation that I would be elected. Uh, but I stood, you know, I was invited to stand. 
in this ward. I uh, was contacted and they said there's a by election, would you stand? I talked to people, I decided to stand as a Labour candidate. That's yes. a full answer to the question, thank you. Um, and I think that's, is that a good What about Water Jones? I've got better of Water Jones. He must be himself. He must be himself. Okay. You can find yourself to your question. I'll try. I think it's a very impertinent question. I don't know how you have the uh, audacity to ask that. <laughs> um, I'm not a member of a political party, and the only place I've ever stood is Port Soak and Ward. I did stand once before, it's my second attempt. Thank you very much. Any, any, uh, any further questions? Yes. Um, Mr. Mike. Yes. One more for Roger. Okay. 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 okay, can you make it a question? <coughs> Roger, you've explained to us your uh, background working with communities and residents associations. Uh, you, you're familiar with could, the could you talk about the oh, yeah. question? Oh, okay, well, oh, no, can you speak up? Okay. Oh, shut up. No, I can't hear you. Nice. Well, okay. You know, right. Okay. 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 Some of the staff are undermining the resolution. The question, question is, if, if you were elected, what would you do to try and resolve this issue? Thank you very much. This is, uh, right, you sit down, just wait, and then you can answer the question. Give you some thinking time. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, go. Okay. Thank you. I understand the question to be about Middlesex Street, and I understand the question. I understand some aspects of this question to be about leaseholders, which I think are the people who've exercised the right to buy, versus that's called the rent-paying tenants. Um, that's my understanding, that there is some, there, there are two different groups on that estate. Now, as you know, um, I'm, I've lived mostly on the Mansell Street, uh, the Guinness Trust Estate on Mansell Street. Um, I worked quite hard with others, but I was one of the main people that worked hard to get an independent residence association. The Guinness Trust tried to enforce the Guinness Trust model um, of uh, the Constitution on us, and with, with the help of Mr. Alderman here and others, we managed to actually produce our own residence association, our own constitution that we were happy with and happy to accept it. So I do have some sympathy with another residence association, not very far away, which appears to have lost recognition. But clearly, there, there are different sorts of residence associations. The residence association on the Guinness Trust Estate, everybody is a rent-paying tenant. It's only recently, as I've gone round, I went round Middlesex Street a couple of days ago, talked to various people, had quite an interesting discussion with Roger Day, and it's only really now that I've got an idea of what's happening there. Now, one of the things I talked over with him is that if the, the leaseholders are legally entitled to form a leaseholders association and be recognised in themselves. Okay? He might therefore have a tenants association which would be recognised within themselves. And both of those could more or less force legal recognition. Um, you would need a certain number of people to basically to sign up to your association and you, and you can quote the Landlord and Tenant Act 1985, which I'm fairly familiar with. And you have to be recognised if enough people have signed up. That doesn't overcome the problem of the rent paying tenants and the right to buy leaseholders. So then you have a different situation. If, the, if both groups were to each have their own independent associations, then there might be some way that the pair of them, those two groups, could then form an overall residence association. Because clearly they have some things in common. But, you know, it's also clear, and I'm, I'm not going to paper over the cracks, it's quite clear that people who, who, who are tenancy pay rate have different interests <coughs> to people who have had a right to buy and are on a long lease. There will be things where they agree, security door, CCTV, a whole range of community provision, but there will be things where they do have different interests, 
But there's nothing to stop each group forming their own association. And in fact, under the law, each group could force that <coughs> and form it independently. You don't have to do what the landlord tells you. As long as you act within the law, you can take the initiative as residents and form your own association. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I know you are. Uh, Jonathan Goldsmith, 11 Harrow Place. I'm a shopkeeper, um, and I do have a, a vote here. Um, you have your tenants and you have your owners. Who, who is your question addressed to? Um, it's basically addressed to, to most. I'd like to know, it. would any okay. of the candidates actually be interested in also representing the shopkeepers, because we feel very neglected. We only find out at the last minute, when the scaffolding goes up, that something is going to happen. And We've been struggling for a number of years to keep our heads above water, and uh, only recently we found out about phase three. We don't know how it will affect us and whether it will go ahead. So I'm interested to know, could we be the third part? You've got your owners and your tenants. We also have the shopkeepers. Okay, is well, anybody interested in helping us too? Any, any other candidates like to answer that specifically? I'm, I'm sure the answer is they would like to help you. But they, will they explain how? Anybody else was not on the left? I think part of the problem with the shopkeepers at the moment is the organisation of the shopkeepers, the way the shopkeepers themselves are organised as a, as a group. And what I think is necessary um, is that the shopkeepers form some kind of committee and then the Corporation of London would then have a duty to consult with that. We did that, and, and uh, at the moment it's, it's fallen into it hasn't worked properly. Well, we did and, that, and we were, and they refused yeah. to recognise us. Yes, yeah. yes. But if you have, but if it's done through a common council, in other words, if it's done, and it's done through, for example, the water note, it could mm. be done through the water note. Um, that water note would pass a resolution saying that there shall be consultation with this committee. Um, it may not be obligatory, or you could advise that there should be consultation with this committee, and I think that would get around the fact that you would be ignored. Although there would be no statutory requirement to consult, there would be a general consensus that you should be consulted. The question is, would you and, uh, back to for the shopkeepers? Yes, if you I would back to the shopkeepers. That, that's what, that's I've been yeah. around, I've spoken to them, and I think that uh, there's a, a, a confluence of inference, in, interest between the shopkeepers okay. and the surrounding area of the estate, and everyone's in this together. Right. Yes. Thank you. Would any of the candidates like to... Would you start to <laughs> I, I actually, much as I like Evan, he's a great guy, completely disagree with him. I don't think it's necessarily about committees and organisations, it's about action. If you elect me, I will, with you, write a letter to City AM demanding that we change this ridiculous situation where you pay a lot more business rates than anybody else. We need to sort that at the national government level, we need to fight for that on behalf of the businesses. Equally, when I walk around Middlesex Street at night, it feels incredibly desolate. We need better light and we need to kick Tower Hamlets to organise their side of the street and we need to get more footfall at the weekend. Now look, I do not claim that I can change the world, but I'll tell you something. Organising a committee and changing the electoral system in the city and moaning on is not going to work. We need to bang on people's doors and say the business rates are too high, the services are not good enough and we want footfall at the weekend. And that's what I'd do. Um, I'm, just a new, I'm just a newcomer and I'm really just a light part of the candidate, but it's been my privilege to start to talk to people and start to learn and be a student of this, this wonderful award. And one of the things that I've certainly heard um, uh, in, my, in, my, in my conversations from, from shopkeepers is, is even in many cases their unwillingness to vote because they don't feel that, uh, that, that, that their needs are served and the business rates are indeed uh, very high uh, and, and concerns around uh, a, 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 a kind of a, a leverage and a weighting uh, towards, uh, uh, towards residents over and against, uh, over against businesses. So I think these things are very important to, to bear in mind and to try and understand better um, I don't feel with all honesty and integrity, because integrity is important to me, that I, 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 I'm currently competent, um, but I'm very eager to learn and sit at the feet of you. Uh, you're wonderful people. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as you already know, there's none of these candidates is actually run business, you and I do. You can, uh, I mean, we can actually raise to each other, I mean, what is actually going on about the rapes. And so, uh, um, so many other things. I actually had an opportunity other day to meet some local businesses. I, I, I think it, it, it's actually not dealing with other people. And uh, I've already actually started talking about business rates and 
the point you were just making. So together, we can do so many great things in this community where our business would get the proper attention they should deserve. Because the rates are going up and up and up. It, 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 it obviously doesn't make any sense, and obviously there aren't so many actually works going to get done, but uh, I can't do it on my own. We need the business, all business need to get together. So, I mean, if you let me, that is actually your opportunity, and I think it's actually an invisible opportunity in fact, because I, I, I actually run business in the city. Thank right? you very much. But just to say, no, I, I, I can endorse that. Obviously, I'm not a business person, but I love the local businesses, the local shops. They mean a lot to me, yeah. to a lot of elderly people who live oh. here. Yeah. It's very important to be able to get a pint of milk and get your hair done. So, no, no, I'm, 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 so I'm, yes, yes, thank you. So I endorse that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think just to say, as I've, as I've said already, that I think it's important that, that businesses know what, what is being planned for the estate, that you have a, a right to know that the information should be available. Uh, at, at the earliest possible stage, we've, we managed to uh, get some key information. As I went and saw the man who wrote the report um, and discussed the, to some extent, the conflicting interests between the businesses around the, the periphery of the estate and the residents, because because the, the money levied from the businesses goes into the residential pot. So to some extent, the, the, the city is wanting to get as much money out of you uh, as possible in order to do things on the estate. But I think that the strongest position, the strongest position in relation to the future of, of the plans for this estate is to talk to the leaseholders, is to talk to the, the, the residents associations to build uh, and, and tenants is to build a consensus and then engage uh, with the with the city of London as a landlord. And thank you very much. Okay. Okay. So, sorry. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just don't have a seat at the front. Yeah. Um, interestingly, I'm a self-employed business myself. Yay. So, so I'm not the you know. Um, I work with the voluntary and community sector, but I'm actually, um, I am a business that works with that sector, so you're not the only, uh, uh, you know, businessman here, as it were. I think businesses should, should be counted as stakeholders. If, if there's going to be any development, if there's going to be any changes to the area, then the shops, the local businesses here, should, be, should have a say on that, should have an input to that. Um, some of the other comments I've heard are also very interesting. Um, anybody that lives here knows that we have a fair amount of footfall at the weekend. If you ever come on a Sunday, we've got plenty of footfall. But it would be nice to develop the, uh, the Saturdays. Um, Sorry about this. <laughs> but it would be nice to, to develop the area on Saturdays to have more shops open, more services. Uh, with the, the Four Seas uh, Hotel development, that's near the Oldgate bus station. There's going to be a whole lot of new, there's going to be a ground floor, which is likely to have new shops, new, new services, new restaurants, this kind of thing. We've, we've got the square, the new square, or whatever we're calling it, at the, um, the Olgate High Street. There's a chance there for some commercial activity. But going specifically to your question, should the local shops, should the local businesses be involved in consultation and planning? Of course they should. They're stakeholders, they pay rates, they're important. They're important to the people in live here. We want the shops, we want the services. So yes, you are important, you should be listened to. Thank you very much. Thank you for talking. You, you have to listen to some words that I'm going to say that are quite long. And I, I would like you to listen, I'd rather you didn't chat, and anybody's phone goes off, they get fined a pound. <laughs> the, um, uh, and then once I've gone through those words, there will be a, a short or a medium length sentence read to you where you're asked to um, res respond to that. I'll deal with this part first. Every officer, clerk and agent in attendance at a polling station shall maintain and aid in maintaining the secrecy of the voting in such station and shall not communicate except for some purpose authorised by law before the poll is closed. 20 person any information as the name or number on the register of voters of any letter or proxy for a voter who has or has not applied for a ballot paper or voted at that station. 
or as to the official mark, and no interference with the votes that were making these votes or otherwise attempt to obtain in the polling station in information as to the candidate for whom any voter in such station is about to vote or has voted or communicate at any time to any person any information obtained in a polling station as to the candidate for whom any voter in such station is about to vote or has voted or as to the number on the back of the ballot paper given to any voter at such station. Every officer, clerk and agent in attendance at the counting of the votes shall maintain an aid in maintaining the secrecy of the voting and shall not attempt to ascertain at such counting the number on the back of any ballot paper or communicate any information obtained at such counting as to the candidate for whom any vote is given in any particular ballot paper. And the person shall directly or indirectly induce any voter to display his ballot paper after he shall have marked the same so as to make known to any person the name of the candidate for against or, for or against whom he has so marked his vote. No person having undertaken to assist a blind voter to vote shall communicate to any other person any information as to the candidate for whom that voter intends to vote to be given or for whom his vote has been given or as to the number on the back of the ballot paper issued at the polling station for the use of that voter. Every person who acts in contravention of provisions of this section shall be liable on summary conviction before two justices of the peace to imprisonment for a term not exceeding six months. And I'd like you all to repeat after me. <coughs> right, so those who, who wish to attend, could you take a, a form? And then you can... Sign your name at the top and bring them over here and I will countersign them uh, in my own time, the same time. Right. Okay, you're all listening. Okay, can you stand up, please? Thank you. Repeat after me, I solemnly promise and declare. I solemnly promise and declare that I will not at this election for common councilman. Do anything forbidden by section four of the Ballot Act 19. Sorry, I'll start again. Do anything forbidden by section four of the Ballot Act 1872. Do anything forbidden by section four of the Ballot Act 1872. Which has been read to me. Which has been read to me. 
Please don't interrupt. I don't interrupt you. Phase three report have been out for quite some time. They, they were dated 2012. We've, many, every, any, any other organisation I've been involved with, a resident association, there's been open and honest consultations. We have sat down with you and various people asking, was there any feedback on these reports? We got nothing for two years. You, either you were ignorant of the reports, or you had no idea, or you withheld them. What was it? Can, can okay, I ask is that your question? Okay. Yes. Then answer the question there. Are you talking for this Residents Association, or the last Residents Association? I, I was on, as, association. It happened, as it happened, Henry, you might not notice, I was on both. So I attended no, the meetings exactly. both. Well, and you didn't, give the, you didn't give us any information. The last Residents Association... The question is, 
is about the information yeah. dissemination. Yes. So you ask your question, we'll ask Thank you. the and the, and the other comment comes into it. The, the information came through to the residents association, but as far as I know, it hasn't gone any further. Oh, the information rubbish. is there. We've I've never discussed the, the third phases. The idea was to actually put the flats on top, possibly, to pay for the cladding and the heating. And, and that was where it was. If you remember, Damien, the leaseholders actually on Middlesex Street got all the, all the double, triple glazing on there with no cost at all. That's not true either. That's not, not true. true. Well, That's not true. Why do you keep repeating that? What, what did you it's pay? not true. Well, not? I, I paid hundreds and hundreds of pounds, and I'll bring the service charge to you for those windows. You keep repeating that. The windows that. were free. Excuse me, I do pay my service charges. So you pay your well, service well, then I don't know what you're This is free. a call. Yeah. If you've asked a question, okay. if you're not satisfied job. with the answer, yeah. I'll let you yeah. ask a supplementary question. Okay. But we have to have a bit of order yeah. on both sides. Yeah. Right. That's it. Okay, so, so supplementary. Okay, supplementary question? Yeah. The, the supplementary. Make it a question. The, the, the question was these reports were dated 2012. They've been yeah. around for mm. nearly two years. Yeah. Why have we not seen sight of these reports? You are our representatives. Why did you not okay. make sure that we got to see these reports? We've been asking for them as residents. We're entitled to know what's been discussed and arranged here. Well, this okay. could undermine a major development. Okay. You ask your supplementary. We'll ask Henry to answer. Uh, as far as I know, it was given to the, the last residents association, possibly not you. I know Williams uh, asked for it. I'm not really information. But that's as far as I know. Henry, you know so that, that, that's no, the no, You've asked the candidate. No, can I, can okay. I point okay. out Henry. possibly why you make the mistake? Sorry, could you please? Sorry, Andrew Hickman, 7C, please. In the head of housing, I forgot his name, Eddie Stevens Eddie or something, Stevens. he wrote and specifically said if double glazing was put in, there would be no charge to the service, to the leaseholders. Triple glazing, there would be a charge, and there has been a charge. It's minuted. It's on the website. Don't bother denying it. Everybody can go well, see it. I'll have to look at my service charge because I'm unaware of actually uh, paying for the triple rates. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, Mary, we got. We got. Okay. You paid for glazing. Okay. This will be a matter of fact, which you can discuss outside the meeting. Uh, you ask the questions on the website. Thank you. I'm, I'm very willing to show anybody my yeah. service charge. Okay. 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 We don't need to go that far. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, if, 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 if Mr. Hall wishes to bring me his copy of his service charge with as much as he wants and not want redacted, um, but with the item underlined, I will take up and find out exactly what he's paid for. These three reports, answer the question. I'm, 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 I'm offering to, if you wish to bring me your statement of your service charge, you can redact as much as you want, so long as the item that you are saying you are paying for the question is on there. I will be happy to find out all the facts behind it. I'm making an offer. Well, and what about phase three? three? The question. Right. The question was phase three, John. You've asked the question. You've you had an answer. answer. If you're not well, satisfied with the answer, then I'm afraid I can't do anything. There, there, are, no there, there are no firm phase three plans to put to anybody. Mm. Oh, yes, there are four it's called consultation, John. Well, but you've got to have something to consult about. Yes, 48 page Hicks report. It is a report, not yes. a decision. No, it's a, what you consult on. Oh, you don't you understand that? Okay, can we do it on board? I think. Yes, please. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. I'm resident of Port Southern and Mr. Can I just go on record to say a thank you and um, a well done for all the work Henry, Dennis and John have been doing. If you're not a common councilman, you don't see the backlog of work that's on the other side and think you'll only appreciate the effort once you are a common councilman, you realise the effort and the time constraints that go into things. So thank you for all of your support and um, I'm just wondering the attitude. The phase three report was a feasibility report. So your councillors, from what I can see, you're telling me we don't need to see the feasibility feasibility reports. We don't need to be involved in the discussion on feasibility reports. And when you've had made a decision, then you'll come and consult us. That doesn't sound like consultation to me. I think there's meetings, and you'll find there's meetings in the city on the 16th of April, and that's where things like this will be discussed with residents. Okay, can, can, we, can we just, the common councilman will answer yeah. the questions. So well, the, there is uh, four residents meetings the city's uh, organised, Sue's quite correct, and the first one's on the 16th 
of April, what until the last two years worth? Well, you had the Residents Association that was recognised. Unfortunately, we didn't receive anything. Unfortunately, you've got so many lips on. Talking while he's talking. You've had the councilman answer your question, and that, and that is how we have to leave it. If you're not satisfied, then uh, you can take us outside the meeting. Right. Any any other questions of the common councilman? Yes, sir. Alan Morley, Betty Kate Square. What are the councilmen going to do to get the um, Middlesex, Middlesex Street Residents Association going again? What are, what's their programme for next year? And to communicate, yeah. think matters that are discussed by the association with all the residents. Because if you're not, my experience is, if you're not on the committee of the Residents Association, you don't have much idea of what's going on, although okay. the website has improved. Good question. John, would you yeah, like to answer? I'd like to address that, and I'd like to start by saying, firstly, I am absolutely in favour of residence associations. Um, the secretary of the Mansell Street would all get this table residence association, so I wouldn't do it if I didn't believe that they are very necessary. And can I also say that a residence association, when it works well, will get masses of stuff for the residents, far more than a dysfunctional residents association can ever dream of. Um, it was only when I became a councilman that I became aware of the difference between the two estates. And I'm not going to go into it. I think that uh, the candidate Roger Jones summed it up perfectly. And um, we're all in the same boat on Maxwell Street here. There are differences and there can be conflicts of interest. I also thought his idea was very, very interesting. Correct, there is a statutory need that if the leaseholders association formed itself and got sufficient numbers, they, the city would have to by law recognise it. I looked that up and I actually sent that to city officers when the current residence association, shall we say, went into the room. So I would recommend that if the leaseholders want to be represented as a group, very easily travel. Um, and I will help them with any matters I can. Equally well, tenants association, let's get it going and then let's see if we can have an actual body. I, I can really recommend First time I heard it tonight, and I think Roger Jones' idea was absolutely I, excellent. And I support that. It should be two residents association, leaseholders and tenants. And then an overarching body if that can be formed. Thank you. Right. David, yes, we can make it a question, please. Sorry. Right. You say you recognise the functioning residents association for the last number of years. Can you explain then why the place is in such a tip, it's a dilapidated place, the common entries are filthy, the lifts are filthy, the place is run down, there's lack of consultation. How, how is that a part of a functioning recognised? I mean, well, what, what, uh, you, what, what, what is it like when it's not no, functioning? Could, could you make that into a question? A question uh, okay, okay so, so Henry, Henry, you've been here the longest, yeah. you know, why are the common parts not painted and maintained well, in a well, sip in a okay, okay, David, if I a question yeah. about the standard of yeah. maintenance yes. and care yes. on the estate, which obviously you have made some comments about, could we please have an answer from... Well, the common parts are being painted now, and nothing to do with the election campaign, because I've got minutes and uh, emails that go back and I'll show people it. Um, so the common parts are being done, the repairs are being done, but you actually look things through completely different glasses, because I go around this estate regularly, and I'm sure most of these other people seem very proud of the estate. You actually mm. seem the opposite. No, Henry, I'm very proud of the estate, but I'm not afraid of saying there's been homeless people, people without any roofs over their heads, sleeping in, in yeah. downstairs, using it as toilets and everything else. Yeah. And you have known about this for ages, well, and you've done nothing I about think it. No. The residents are letting people in when we're coming to the first of all, it is a national public record which will be held on the minutes of community and children's yeah. services. Yeah. Exactly. And if you go back, to the committee meetings of community and children's services, you will see that the subject of homeless people is brought up repeatedly. Uh, Paul Soken members have been extremely active. By us. In, in, in other words, the three of us. Oh, we're not effective. Of, but, okay. but, but we do not have the ability to patrol at night. We do not have the ability to stop selfish people not closing doors properly the and allowing people to be yeah. Well, we don't have that ability. Right, okay. right. Can, we, can we move on? Are there any other questions that uh, anybody would like, uh, any elector would like to bring? Uh, no, well, thank you very much. That was a, a very spirited... Oh, sorry, oh, yeah. question. How do we get in contact with you guys, um, just well, in general? I'll give you our cards afterwards. Yeah, okay. brilliant. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Can I, can I thank you very much? Uh, Stand
Summoned here to this ward night, may depart hence, and you are required to give your attendance again tomorrow morning at the Learning Centre, Army Street Library and Community Centre, and the Port Soken Community Centre, and hereof fail not. God save the Queen. Please remain, please remain up standing whilst the Alderman of this ward, Alderman Sir Michael Mayor, Shouldn't be two residents associated, lease holders and tenants. And then an overarching body effect can be formed. Thank you. Right. David, yes. would you make it a question, please? Sorry. You say you recognise the functioning resident association for the last number of years. Can you explain then why the place is in such a tip, it's a dilapidated place, the common entries are filthy, the lifts are filthy, the place is run down, there's lack of consultation. How, how is that a part of a functioning recognition? I mean, well, what, what, uh, what, 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 what is it like when it's not I mean, functioning? Could, could you make that into a question? A question? Okay, I mean, you okay. so, so Henry, Henry, you've been here the longest, yeah. you know, why are the common parts not painted and maintained well, in a well, sip, in a okay, okay, David, if I ask a question yeah. about the standard of yeah. maintenance yeah. and care yeah. on the estate, which obviously you have made some comments about, could we please have an answer from... Well, the common parts are being painted now, and nothing to do with the election campaign, because I've got minutes and uh, emails that go back and I'll show people it. Um, so the common parts are being done, the repairs are being done, but you actually look things through completely different glasses because I go around this estate regularly and I'm sure most of these other people seem very proud of the estate, you actually seem the opposite. No, Henry, I'm very proud of the estate but I'm not afraid of saying there's been homeless people, people without any roofs over their heads, sleeping in, in yeah. downstairs, using it as toilets and everything else. And you have known about this for ages, well, and you've done nothing I about it. I think the residents are letting people in where we're coming from. First of all, it is a matter of public record, which will be held on the minutes of community and children's yeah, services. Exactly. And if you go back to the committee meetings of community and children's services, you will see that the subject of homeless people is brought up repeatedly. Uh, Port Soken members have been extremely active. By us. In, in, in other words, the three we're, of us. We're not effective. But, okay. but, but we do not have the ability to patrol at night. We do not have the ability to stop selfish people not closing doors properly the and allowing people to speak yeah. back in. We don't have that ability. Okay. Right. Can, can, we, can we move on? Are there any other questions that uh, anybody would like, uh, any elector would like to bring? Uh, no, well, thank you very much. That was a, a very spirited... Oh, sorry, oh, yeah. so how do we get in contact with you guys um, just well, in general? I'll give you our cards afterwards. Yeah, okay. brilliant. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Can I, can I thank you very much? Upstanding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It'll take you a while, so thank you. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, all ye good people of the ward of Port Soken, summoned here to this ward night, may depart hence, and you are required to give your attendance again tomorrow morning at the Learning Centre, Army Street Library and Community Centre, and the Port Soken Community Centre, and hereof fail not. God save the Queen. Please remain, please remain up stand, standing whilst the Alderman of this ward, Alderman Sir Michael Mayor, retires in my conference.